Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great ace attorneys. Um, let's continue the trial. Got a bit of a rest from the craziness from last time, so hopefully we'll get to the bottom of this trial today. And there won't be like another surprise, whoa, investigation session or whatever. I've considered the defense's counsel, defense counsel's request for a further summation examination of the jury. Hey, Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. You made a giant mistake. Oh no, what happened? And I've determined that the court must uphold the defense's judicial right to this procedure. Oh, I hurt my elbow exercising. It hurts. So, counsel, you will now proceed with your second submission examination. I forgot we were doing this. I started doing my relic weapon in 14. What's so bad about that? I need to do that. <laughs> I presume the jury is ready, Mr. Foreman. We are, my lord. Very good. In that case, I must ask each of you now to state clearly and concisely for the court. It's a huge time sink. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't want to do it. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm just so slow at playing MMORPGs. I'm just like, give me the cute outfits and thanks, bye. <laughs> The grounds on which you find the defendant guilty of this crime. Jing jing! The jurors' contentions. The accused ripped behind evidence at the scene, didn't he? Those three books of his. If there is some novel alternative explanation about how the victim was stabbed, I might reconsider. The woman was thrown books can't be related to this crime if the window was closed, can it? Dear me, it was only a little book, hardly life-threatening, even with the direct hit. Look, I just won't get this over it. If I don't bring home some pay tonight, I'll be in a tiny bit of trouble. Come to think of it, we had a fire at home a while ago. He gave me the sneezes. If you want, we could do it together, but you should be faster than me because you're a DPS and I'm a healer. True, 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 true. Oh, then it would be faster for us since we'll do more damage. Hmm, yes. Considerably more tangible arguments from all members of the jury this time around, it seems. With one notable exception, of course. My learned student friend was unable to find fault in the previous witness testimony. Hmm. So the court must accept the fact that it was indeed the accused seen fleeing from the scene. And moreover... No one else was even at the scene the, to commit the crime. Well, if the eyewitnesses are correct, it would seem as if the conclusion is somewhat set in stone. I fail to see how it can be argued any other way. That means, I'm afraid, that during this summation examination, it's essential that you establish some other tangible explanation for the facts. But how? What would even constitute a tangible explanation here? Isn't it obvious? Who stopped the woman? And how? Those two details are all you need to provide. Simply give us a name and a method by which the attack was conducted. And there I was thinking this might be hard. But Mr. Naruhodo, you have to do it. Otherwise, this really will be where the trial ends. Ugh, no pressure then. That's quite enough preamble. Proceed with the submission examination, please. I presume you are prepared, counsel. Oh, yes, my lord. All right, Yunosuke, focus your mind now. Clearly, the key to the summation examination is going to be juror number four, the maid. Or should I say, Mrs. Garadub. We have a book that disappeared from the Garadub's house on the evening of the incident. And the fourth book found in the victim's hands. There must be a way to link the two. Yes, that's what we have to find. Using every technique I learned in my short career so far, whatever it takes. Don't forget to keep... Keep an eye on Mrs. Garadub and how she reacts, even to things that other people say. Okay, so plan of attack, I'm going to interrogate her first. 
And then I'm gonna look at everyone else's reactions. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm gonna look up Final Fantasy XIV Archer Relic Weapon. I mean, Bard. Why am I doing Archer? Do Relic Weapon Quests. No, I just wanna see it. It is the Artemis Bow. Wow. It looks pretty, but uh, it's such a. Uh, I'll get to it later. Morning, hey Mokus, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday, Friday. If it's morning for you, it's probably Friday. I uh, hope you had a good week so far. It's called the Zeta Bow. Well, how come it says Artemis Bow here? What? F fourteen Zeta Bow. Oh damn! Yeah, it looks so cool. I should try to get it. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go to Mrs. Gerda first, and we're going to press her. But the little book was on fire at the time, was it not? With flames of love, I'll have you know. There's really no such thing as a loving incendiary bomb. <laughs> well, he brought it upon himself as playing with fire to betray a fiery love. Isn't it? Well, don't you agree? Oh, um, well, any kind of betrayal is certainly a bad thing, yes. But I think the argument might have arisen out of your misunderstanding, Mrs. Gerda. No, you mind that. The point is, we were just having a jolly little dispute. Nothing more. And I won't have any more of these suggestions that it was anything whatsoever to do with this crime. Right, well, we'll see about that. But what about juror number five? He doesn't seem to be turning a hair at Mrs. Garadub's relentless onslaughts. <laughs> it's almost as though he's used to it. What a gentle soul he is. Okay, so she gave absolutely nothing, so now we're just gonna start from the beginning and press everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But as we now know, there were four books, not three. Well, what difference does it make? There's every possibility that the fourth book in fact belongs to the defendant's landlord. Yes, that's the part I have a problem with. Sorry? Well, at the point the woman was stabbed, this landlord fellow was at home, wasn't he? Enjoying a fiery scrap with his wife or something, you said. That's not exactly how I put it, no. Well, either way, the point is the fellow and his wife were somewhere else when it happens. Hmm. I think that's what you call a strong alibi. So it couldn't have been the landlord who did it, which leaves only the Nipponese fellow. Honestly, I can't see what all this palaver's about. It's a done deal, isn't it? I suppose it is, since I have nothing witty left to say. So, you might be willing to change your decision, you mean? Oh my, such delight on your face, but I'm afraid I shan't be swayed by emotion. Despite what you may think of me, I am a very modern, metropolitan, and rational woman. That's great. <laughs> if one reads the morning papers, it's all forgotten by tea time, isn't it? So why read them in the first place? So you get the morning information, dude. You see, modern, metropolitan, and rational thinking, wouldn't you say? And not at all extreme. As I see it, an overwhelmingly suspicious Japanese man has been implicated by overwhelmingly strong testimony. So it's despite one or two minor puzzlements, I do declare that the man is overwhelmingly guilty. Modern, metropolitan, and rational logic, wouldn't you say? Overwhelmingly. But us modern gals are always delighted to embrace new fans, you know. So I'd, only be, I'd be only too happy to reconsider, to consider an exciting new theory if you could come up with one. I'd be happy to do that too, if only I could. Let's do our very best not to disappoint the modern and metropolitan young lady. Right, I'm glad you omitted rational there. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so I feel like if I press this guy, I'm not going to get anything new. It's probably gonna be out of jurors five and six that I'm actually going to get like the meat of information. Puff, puff, puff. I mean, <laughs> hey, Smith, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. Today was payday for me, so I got money. <laughs> but what about the possibility that the window was open? What about it? I mean, there's just no way it could have been. How can you be so sure? The prosecutor fell over there said it earlier, didn't he? Winters in London are no joke. You don't want to invite that sort of cold indoors. So no, that window wasn't open. Us Londoners like sitting by the fire and staying warm, see? But you couldn't categorically state that the window wasn't open, could you? It just wasn't. They wouldn't have opened it. Then what's the point in even having windows, huh? Council, you would kindly refrain from childish bickering. Oh, um, sorry. Somehow I need to show there's an undeniable possibility that the window was open. Because this young man isn't going to budge otherwise. There's like seven different AR relic weapons that you need to make for your final final relic weapon. Oh, okay, so the one I was looking at was one of the pieces. I see, I see, I see. You just want to get this over with. How can you sit there and say something like that? A man's future is at stake here. Well, him and me both then, like I said before. What? I told you already. I'm a day laborer, aren't I? If I don't bring home some reddies with me tonight, you'll find me floating face down in the Thames tomorrow morning. What? You heard me. My missus doesn't want to mess about, you know. She can be fierce, believe you and me. Wait, believe you me? I'm a shining example of marital bliss, then. A situation like this cropped up the other day. It was, well, um... Do you know, it's funny, but I can't quite remember. Sorry? It's too rotten, that's the thing. I must have blocked it out. You must have blocked it out? Helpful. Why are you saying this? I wonder if Mr. Beat will ever be dragged to the Thames by a scarf. Don't even go there, Mr. Soto. There must be some way to jog his memory about this. No one else is really reacting to anything that anyone else is saying, so I don't think there's anything I can really do. Sorry, my hair is bothering me today. Ugh. How's it like a does that have anything to do with your decision about the defendant's culpability in this case? Sorry, watch that. You'll have to speak up, lad. Could you tell us more about that fire? It was last winter. My grandchildren picked me a lovely cake on my birthday. And it's 75 candles on top it did. What a sight to behold it was. You put candles on a cake? Was was it some kind of devil worship? <laughs> of course not. It was an angel cake to celebrate my birthday, obviously. It seems that a common custom here in Great Britain, Mr. Mr. Radahoro. Anyway, I must have all my puff to blow them out. Only I must have blown wrong somehow. The flames didn't go out, but the candles went flying all over the room. The furniture caught and everything went up. The whole place filled with smoke. Definitely sounds like devil worship to me. I cut the hair in front of my eyes so much better. Yeah, I think soon it'll be time for me to give my bangs a trim, but not quite yet, just like a week or two more. I wanna grow out my hair until it gets colder and then I could just chop it off. <laughs> and by the sneezes, I presume you mean a cold, but how did you catch a cold from a fire? What a fiasco it was. The grandchildren, bless them, threw water over me as they tried to put out the flames. And then, because the whole room had filled up with smoke, of course, we had to open all the windows to clear it. The windows. The bright winter air rushed over me like the devil dash on my grave it did. I got a terrible cold from it. They put me in the hospital for a while. I won't forget that birthday in a hurry. I knew it was devil worship all along. 
But something about this old man's story is playing on my mind for some reason. Cause it be the smoke from the fire? We need to demonstrate who, apart from Mr. Matsume, could have attacked a young woman on the street. As well as how he, or she, could have done it. Yes, but once again, the juror's statements are full of personal prejudice. A lot of them seem convinced they're right, even in the face of logical arguments to the contrary. I think you're going to need to pit them against each other to force them to accept an alternative explanation. Yes. I don't necessarily need to find contradictions between their assertions, just a connection might do the trick. Alright, I'll see what I can do. If anything stands out, I'll go in for a strike. That's the spirit. Wait, that was it? There was like no- No one really reacted though. And I think if I press again, it won't- mm. Mm. I, It's gotta be- definitely gotta be- Winter- winter house fires are dire. You have to open windows to clear the smoke. That's when the chill gets you, see? Okay, so it's definitely juror number six, and... Um... Can't be really related to this. Okay, so I'm gonna try pitting him against him. These two juror statements clearly contradict one another. Did you? How exactly, counsel? You're putting me again? I told you, it wasn't me! Hmm, what's that you say? Speak up, lad, speak up! Juror number three, do you see? Oh, me? See, see what, sir? Did you hear juror number six's account of his birthday celebrations last year? It seems, despite being a Londoner, he once opened his windows in the middle of winter. Well, yes, of course, because it was an emergency. I mean, obviously, if the room was filled with smoke from a fire, then you'd be mad not to open the... Oh, I was right. Oh, thank the Lord. Nope. No, what? We go... What? Oh. Exactly. On the day in question, at the time of the incident, there was a fire in the Garadab household. And Mr. Garadab had the following to say about it. Oh, I thought you had it wrong. First hot second, I thought I had it wrong too, and I was like, no. The whole place was filled with smoke. Sun! Sun! Oh! Oh, my hat! Uh... Oh, she's reacting. Juror number four, do you have something to say about that? Mrs. Garadub. Oh, dear me! What is the meaning of this? How dare you imply that I'm hiding who I really am? It's imperative that you confirm something for the court. So please, it's time to drop the pretense now. Oh, what is it? When the fire started in your house that day, did you or your husband open the window? What? I, I beg your pardon? What are you insinuating? The room would have been thick with smoke after the carpet and the bookcase caught fire as they did. In a situation like that, it's inconceivable that you wouldn't have opened the window. And what if we did? But, like, okay, so then it proves that the window is open, but where did the knife come from? That's the thing we have to prove. Like, if the knife came from their house, then yes, it was a complete accident and she was stabbed through by an accident. And it, no malicious intent there. But... If we only prove that the book came out, like, it still doesn't do anything with the knife. Oh, all right then. Yes, you're right. My husband was frantically trying to open the window. Which can't have been easy since I continued to give him a justly deserved book battering. Even though your house was on fire? Oh, you never stop throwing until the anger subsides. It would be terribly bad for the nerves to do otherwise. Uh, of course. I should have realized. That's a significant step forward, Mr. Naruhodo. You've managed to establish that the window was open. We simply must have that added to Mrs. Garadab's formal statement. Okay, now you mentioned the window was open at the time. Do I press this again to get more information? The fourth book found that the scene of the crime shows very obvious signs of fire damage. And the title of the book is The Lion's Pride. 
the same title, in fact, as the book that Mr. Garadub told us he had been reading. Well, I really couldn't say. On the day in question, did you or did you not throw at your husband? The copy of the Lion's Pride that he had been reading. I did. It was the first thing I could lay my hands on, so I held it straight at him. And now you come to mention it, yes. He was rather enjoying reading it, you're right. Why did you not reveal this information to the court from the outset? Because I couldn't, you insolent little man. I didn't remember. At times like that, you pick up and throw whatever you can lay your hands on as well, you know. I really don't. I barely noticed I was throwing the book. What's <laughs> just the title of it? Whoa, hello. Why are you reacting? What is it, your number five? You know something? I've... I've remembered what it was. The memory I'd blocked out. Ah. It was... Listen to what his granny... What this granny was saying. Put it all floating back. Who are you calling a granny, you cheeky devil? I'm Mrs. Gerdeb, or the maid, I'll have you know. The man doesn't even flinch. Please tell me that's not because he's so used to being hit all the time. It was about two weeks ago now. I just got back home after work, like. I put my hand in my pocket for wages I earned that day, and I nearly died. There was a hole. Every last penny I dropped out. Oh dear, what a disaster. I haven't heard the half of it, boy. Oh? The wife was cutting up some chicken at the time. I, I could hardly get the words out, but I told her straight. I've lost the day's wages, love. Next thing I knew, the blade was whistling past my ear. Struck into the wall next to me, it did. About an inch deep. No words, just terror. I could smell then, you know, that god-awful stench of the Thames. I was sure I was going to end up face down in the muddy banks that night, I can tell you. Now, that's a real disaster, isn't it? I'll never use the word lightly again. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. When women lose their rag, they'll throw anything at you. Knives, hatches, hammers, you name it. Mr. Naruhodo, you mustn't think that all women are so short-tempered and unrefined. You, like, judo throw me, man. No, no, I wasn't thinking that. Throwing household objects at people is, well, it's so uncivilized. At least attack with honor, using a bow or the like. What? A tag? Who are you going to tag? Never mind. Anyway, this man's words could be rather significant, I think. Alright, we'll come back to the bow and arrow thing later, if I dare. So will his testimony? A woman in rage will hurt almost anything at you. The kitchen knife really brought that home to me. So do I press this? I'm staying single, sorry ladies. <laughs> No, you just have to find someone who doesn't fly off the handle like that. Your wife, your wife really threw a kitchen knife at you? That's right, she was chopping meat with it. Had a tidy edge on it, believe me. Still, it's all memories, isn't it? It started with that small she threw at me when we recorded. And since then, the list of things she's thrown at me has grown along with our relationship. <laughs> there was a cup, then a glass, then a pot, and then a kettle. A chair, a wardrobe, a a wardrobe? Wow, she's strong. A cooker, a bathtub, a bathtub, damn. Your wife must be even beefier than you. And things came to a head last week when she threw me. <laughs> right into the Thames. Still, she's not so bad when she's calmed down. She's a little sweetheart, really. I'm so happy for you. If you want to know what I think. I think this whole idea of ladies first that we're so obsessed with in this country was thought of by some clever lads who've been tossed into the tents a few too many times by the wise. That's a very interesting theory. A game theory. What a 
terrible thought. On the face of it, this sure statement just sounds like a really extreme anecdote. But I think it might turn out to be an extremely powerful weapon. A weapon I might be able to use to make the jurors accept an alternative explanation here. Okay, so... It's... Uh, it's not him. If there is some novel alternative explanation... Okay, I'm gonna pit you against five. Those two statements clearly have a deeply significant connection. Good grief! You mean they don't contradict each other? Explain, Council, at once! Juror number two. Do you think, perhaps... ...that this could be one such novel alternative? Oh my! Whatever do you mean? An alternative explanation as to how the victim was stabbed in the back. What are you talking about? We've demonstrated that the fourth book, The Lion's Pride, that was found at the scene of the crime... ...originated in Mr. Garadev's room on the top floor of his house. Therefore, it's equally possible that some other object besides the book... ...could have found its way from the Garadev household to the street below. Uh, what's that now? After all, Mrs. Garadev could have thrown any number of different objects at her husband. Isn't that right, juror number four? What are you insinuating now, you, you little beanpole? I'm beginning to think that, ever since the true origins of this book came to light, perhaps she's had a feeling this might be what happens. Now you listen here, you Eastern Gala! As a foreman of the jury, I demand a straight answer. You give us this yarn about some other object making its way out of the house, but what? What was it? Beanpole. <laughs> yeah, he's not that thin. Really taking a big gamble here. That's a bold accusation to make, but I haven't any real evidence to back it up. But I'm certain that at the very least, this warrants further investigation. Alright, Mr. Foreman, I'll try to explain the defense's theory. The other object that found its way from the Garadev household to the scene of the crime was... Juror number four, Mrs. Garadev. What? What now? I must apologize in advance for this. But I need you to confirm something else for the court. This knife. Have you ever seen this knife before? Uh. Good lord, counsel. What on earth are you doing? That's the weapon that was lodged into the victim's back, man. My lord, remember that when the victim was attacked, Mr. and Mrs. Garadub were in the th throes of an argument. Mrs. Garadub was hurling anything she could after her husband, who had been backed up against the window. A window that had been opened to clear the smoke, and through which a book sailed to land at this crime scene. You can't seriously believe that! The book was found in the victim's grasp! Are you saying that it flew out the window and across the street to land completely in her hand? <laughs> Even my missus doesn't get on an aim like that! Yes, I admit, there are many details we don't know, we don't yet understand. But that's the point, that's precisely why. We must not allow this trial to end. Not right now. Oh my! Uh. Why does Juror 3 kind of look like the young husband's uh, brother? They do look similar, actually, now that you mention it. Mrs. Garadub, your answer, please. Have you seen this knife before or not? Oh, conveniently fainting to not answer, huh? My lord! I, I wish to change my decision. I'm a woman of my word, after all. Thank you, madam. Oh, I, I totally messed up her accent. Yes, I agree. I certainly didn't see this coming, but... I just don't think it would be right for this trial to come to an end now with so many unanswered questions. Mr. Foreman? 
I'd have to agree. Not that I think the granny did it, mind. Yes, you know what? I'm not quite happy about this at the moment either. All together now, ladies and gents. Except you're six, he's not doing it. Dun, 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 dun. Whenever I get accused of murder, I also scream like a little girl and pass out. <laughs> we... we did it! Oh, congratulations, Mr. Nanahuro! So, as a result of the defense's summation examination, a number of jurors' leanings have changed. Two jurors called guilty, against four now calling innocent. Accordingly, the opinion of this court is divided. And this trial will continue. And now Van Zeeks is gonna be like, Oh, stupid, you missed this piece of evidence! And it's like, you never showed it to me, how was I supposed to know this information? And so it goes. Now then, Lord Van Zeeks, how does the prosecution wish to proceed? This trial is rapidly descending into a farce. Oh, oh, oh. Like a corked wine, the first few sips are bitter enough. Now Dracula is gonna drink a cup of wine to break it. Aiden! <laughs> but what follows is so repugnant, it's good for nothing save the cutter. If, if I may, Lord Fanzix. The defense has just put forward a credible alternative explanation for what happens. Credible? Is that your considered opinion, Mr. Foreman? The defense's argument is a joke to which I barely know how to respond, but let me start by insisting that you must all familiarize yourself better with the relative positions of those places being discussed. What? What? He's going to be drunk before the trial is over. Unless I knock him out first! <laughs> what do you mean by that? What's his ankle this time? Slur his words time. <laughs> it should already be more than apparent that between the crime scene and the guard of household runs a rather wide street, Briar Road. Which means that the distance from the guard of house to the scene is some, yes, 15 yards. Let me see, 15 yards, that's about 14 meters. F 14 meters? Oh, that's a little farther than I'd imagined. And as you ladies and gentlemen of the jury rightly noted as having portentous significance, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, the smoldering book, wantonly hurled by the lady of the house, traveled some 15 yards to land on the opposite side of the road, neatly between the collapsed victim's fingers and thumb. Is that your final conclusion, my learned and deluded friend? Ah, um... And did the jackknife follow a near-identical trajectory to plunge into the middle of the victim's back? This fantasy is somewhat stretching the notion of having a bad day for the victim, I think. Even those pathetic serialized detective stories have more believable plots. <laughs> like the one from the ship that I experienced? <laughs> there's nothing I can say to that. What do you mean there's nothing you can say to that? The book landed shorter, she picked it up and took the fire out, but then the knife landed further and she dropped. Like, what's so hard about that? It's totally plausible. Oh my gosh. Wait, how many... How many yard feet is... Um, 15 yards. 15 yards to feet. It's 45 feet. Um, let's see. Okay, maybe it is a little far. But if if they're at a higher altitude, then the item will fall like fly further. I don't know. It's it's just possible, okay? That prosecutor loves the sound of his own voice. Mitsusato? Serialized detective stories are pathetic, are they? How dare he? Um, maybe let's pick our battles here. My lord, might I be allowed to speak? 
As judicial, oh, that, that's not fancy. As judicial assistant, you may speak for the defense. Yes, go ahead. The prosecution may consider the idea of fantasy. But what the defense has postulated was believable enough to persuade the jury to change its leaning. And as such, the court has a duty to explore this alternative explanation as thoroughly as possible. To that end... Juror number four, Mrs. Joan Garada, must be called to testify and submit to cross-examination. Saints alive! A cross-examination of a juror! Order! Order! Well, this... this is highly irregular. It is unprecedented for a member of the jury to be summoned to the witness stand. Okay. And unnecessary. Uh, Lord Van Zeeks. There are already witnesses in the stand whose testimony the defense may further cross-examine. If my learned friend's partial theory has any truth in it, then both a burning book and a jackknife must have flown through the sky before this couple's eyes. And we must assume they would be able to testify accordingly. Hmm. What say you, witnesses? Yes, sir. Constable Roy B. Roy B. Reporting for duty, sir. Well, good morning, officer. Sorry for dozing until now, sir. I haven't slept for a month on account of a villain who's appeared in my beat, sir. Oh, they are so heroic, those London bobbies. Patricia, my darling, I've been neglecting you, but no more. Oh, really, my hero? You make me swoon. I am just mixing up everyone's accents. So. But well, I hereby reject the defense's request. Oh. We can call the husband. There were two people in the house when items were being thrown. Come on, guys. And all of the witnesses in the stand to testify again. State forthwith before the court any details pertaining to the defense's alternative explanation of events. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. They don't look like a married couple, they look more like siblings. Their eye colors are too similar, their hair colors are similar. Ooh. <laughs> this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garadim. Believe me, a learned Bobby is good for his word. You see, Sam, the windows on the top floor of the Garadim household are top hinged casements. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out of the window, we would have seen it. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help, but my trusty Rowley was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one moment, sir. Nothing strange to report on that front, sir. Well, this is quite startling. Top hinged casement windows. That detail was not in the police report, Constable. Ah, oh, yes, I'm um, sorry about that. I must have been a little drowsy. <clears throat> you cannot excuse your sins with drowsiness every time, Constable. No, sir. Um, sorry, but... What exactly is a top-pinched casement window? And you? You cannot excuse your ignorance with such trite remarks, my learned friend. I'm from Japan! Of course, sorry. I found it, Mr. Nadahodo. Cast your mind back to the windows in Mr. and Mrs. Garadub's room. Alright, I'll try. So the window opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. But as it's a top hinged casement window, it swings open along the upper edge, you see. I'm glad you've rectified your ignorance. A casement window's most prominent feature. I hate this guy, I wanna slap him so bad. 
is its stay, a metal bar which prevents the window from being opened beyond a certain amount. It prevents opening? This is all news to me. Having a juror who's connected to the crime is bad for justice. I know, right? Ugh. Absolutely correct. So? And it's like, you are you know that she's like living in the building that the defendant is living in. Why would you choose a juror so close in environment to him? That's not, that's not partial. That's not, uh. Doesn't make sense. In other words, if the book or knife were to have been thrown out the window, I don't know. The book or knife were to have been thrown through the open window, it would have clattered against the pane and fallen straight down to pavement below. Then here's what happened: the book did indeed fall, and so did the knife. But she picked it. She picked up the book, walked across the street, and then just fell. That. That is also a possible... I... Uh, <sighs> she doesn't like the... Exactly! She doesn't like the defendant! So she's obviously biased, so it's not fair! You see the problem then? Good, your education in Windows is complete. Because otherwise, how would the... How would Olive Green have, have gotten the book in her hand? All the way across the street? If she didn't pick it up from the closer side and then walked across? There was never any possibility of either the book or the knife traveling 15 yards over the road. That is, unless the window pane had been shattered, something we've discounted already. That can't be! Did you see that, Romy? That young Japanese man just collapsed in agony. Oh yes, my darling, I saw it. I saw it crumble before me. Wow, these guys are racist. Oh, Rolly, you're so strong. How is this happening? I haven't even started the cross-examination yet, and already my argument's been destroyed. Counsel, if you could drag yourself upright again, the court awaits your cross-examination. My lord. Oh, good. Another desperate situation. It, every time it feels like we're getting closer, they're just like, nope, we're gonna like launch you 15 feet back. Oh, this case has nothing to do. Just press every statement. I need to get some kind of information. How do you say that for certain? A very good question, sir. And the answer is this. As the notable founding principles of the force written on it as a reminder to all us policemen of our sworn duty. He showed us that before, didn't he? Did he? I can't say I remember. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the peace for the common man. It's what the job's all about. And that is why I could stand here today beside my long, stunning, suffering wife and tell you a Bobby's good for his word. While rubbing my tired eyes, admittedly. Sup? Oh, Rowley, you're so manly. Of course I am, my darling Patricia. Oh, Rowley. No, none of this is what I meant. I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garadab? Ah, oh, I see, sir. You should have said so earlier, sir. Yes, well, so could you answer the question? That was a waste of time, then. What happened to his hat? I don't know, but like they're both wearing like um, kind of worn out clothes, so possibly he just has old worn clothes and he can't fix it. Absolutely, sir. I will answer to the fullest of my ability, sir. There's a surprising reason why Mr. and Mrs. Garadev's domestic dispute can't be related to the case. But before I get into that, sir, just one thing. Yes? I'd very much like you and all your countrymen to understand the Great British Institution of Scotland Yard. What? So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London Bobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here. Search 
to that end, so I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for your perusal. But I must warn you, you won't be able to get through it without shedding a few tears. Oh, is this going to be important evidence? Thank you, I'll try. Okay! Rules of conduct and what to- ma'am, they must adhere. Um... Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. I need to examine. Strive to preserve the peace within his allotted beat. Patrolling officer expected to walk 20 miles around his beat for furtherance of community relations. Any crimes fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with invest initial investigation to help detectives. Okay, this tells me absolutely nothing. Can I examine this? No, I just- okay, so there's nothing I can examine on the cover. Wait a minute! But... This... isn't... The place where this happened isn't his beat. So where is the... Where is the police officer that did, is in charge of this? Because... Patricia said she wants to go get the police. That... um... Yeah, when a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigation to help detectives. Where is that policeman? Under the beat. Any crimes of the beat in which they are discovered? Yeah. Um, within his allotted beat, right? Or am I overthinking things? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. But I feel like this is gonna be important. I'll just press this. By which you mean they don't open fully, is that correct? Yes, sir! They're just there to allow a bit of air through the house, you see? So they're restricted to how much they open. And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from inside the room would simply strike the pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Oh, this is actually helpful. Here is the location where objects would have fallen. Okay, 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 okay. Hmm, yes. Directly opposite the scene of the crime, on the other side of the rather wide road. Would it have been so hard for somebody to mention this top hinged casement thing before? Yes, it would have. Well, I have another question for you, Constable. And what would that be, sir? How do you even know? Why would you have any idea what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Garadip's house is furnished with? Ah, well, sir, that's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation yesterday. What is this? Do you have something to add, Mrs. B? Hmm? Sorry? You look... Well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, uh, I was just remembering. That's all. We really were so lucky. Okay, I feel like these two are like hamming it up or like trying to seem more important than they are like, oh, hey, look, we did something so important for this case. But they're actually like lying. Or like somehow like twisting the truth a little. But watch me be wrong. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, of course I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just so lucky it didn't happen on Rowley's feet. It was so close, you see. Oh, I hadn't realized. I'm watching? Watching what? Oh yes, that street, Briar Road, was the boundary between Rowley's feet and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? So where's the police officer who was in charge of that? Why were you the one investigating? Constable Beat. Hmm? Oh, e yes, that's right. That's the reason I was helping out with the interviewing the occupants of the Garrett Impulsive yesterday. The house is on my beat, you see, sir. Hmm, that really was cutting it close then. Comfortable. I wonder if you could clarify something. Oh, you told us to watch you be wrong? <laughs> yeah, please watch me. What if he's not an officer? Oh. If the Garadab household is on your beat, does that mean that the pavement next to it is as well? I 
outside Mr. Garadev's house? Yes, ma'am. The pavement on that side of the road is part of my beat. I see. I was unaware of that. Just think, the woman have been attacked just on the other side of Brow Road. We would never have been able to go for that meal to celebrate our wedding anniversary. But that's the life of a Bobby after all. They moved the body. Yeah, I'm thinking they moved the body. Extraordinary people, our Bobbies, tirelessly working for the benefit of all Londoners. Do you know what I think? I think it was a good Lord's way of rewarding my Roly for all his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? That must be it, Pat, my love. That must be it. I think perhaps we should make sure we have that information officially on record. Leave it to me, Mr. Nadahoro. I'll take care of it immediately. Case file information has been updated in the court record. Thank you. And now it's my turn, I think. Before that, I go to court record. Um, okay. Details, young woman rendered a conscious following stab wound to the back. Pavement of Bry Road, east side. Reporting officer, Roly Beats. Okay. There's gonna be something significant about the area that Beat was patrolling and where the crime happens. Uh, if anything had been thrown out the window, we would have seen it. But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already and it was dark. Oh, but early now I was running along, gazing at the night sky, looking for a lucky star. Sorry? The star that will guide us to eternal happiness. Can't it guide you to answer the question? If a flaming book had caught across the sky in front of us, it would have lit up like a shooting star. And if I'd seen a shooting star, I would have made a wish upon it. Let really be an inspector, I would have said. Three times at least. Yes, yeah, they're trying to get him a promotion so that they don't have to live so poorly. And that's why they're doing this. Oh, uh, you guys! Of course, what with the smog and everything, we couldn't actually see any stars. In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? Yes, sir, that is correct, sir. A Shelley's night sky in London is starless, sir. Hmm, it certainly seems like they're telling the truth. And then we saw a poor woman fall to the ground, so we ran straight to help her. You were looking at the sky, but then you saw a woman fall to the ground? How does that make sense? If it was on his beat, why did he, um, she go to get an officer? Because they didn't want to deal with it? Because they wanted to go- I don't- I don't know, I don't know. Okay, this statement will be important as to if, if my I, thinking is correct. Yes, you said that you went to a nearby police box to fetch another officer, is that right? That's right, yes. If I had been on Rolly's beat, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. You can't be expected to know the location of every police box on every beat. Sorry, I'm not helping. No, you're, you're raising good points. It's good things to think about, so I don't get tunnel vision. So Rolly told me the way, only I should have got a little lost on the way. Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rowley. Oh, please. So, I suppose I was gone for about 15 minutes. But like I said, my Rowley was at the scene the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed. I was off duty at the time, of course, but a true Bobby is never really off duty, sir. I need to take my eyes off the crossing for one moment. Blah, 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 blah. Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. I had my eyes wide open the entire time. Never looked away for a second. No one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. I swear to that on y'all's honor, sir. Really? That seems a little strange. Beg your pardon, sir? Strange, sir. Seems altogether regular to me. 
This burnt copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the Garrett Up household. So the question remains, how did it find its way into the hand of the victim? Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were at the scene of the crime the entire time? I forgot to mention I got you an Oculus Quest 2. There's a 2 for the Oculus Quest? How is it? Is it easy to set up? Aha! Uh -huh. Could it be a different copy, sir? One that just happened to be burnt as well? Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hands? As we can see from this photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulder. Well, so that book was in the lady's hand from the moment we arrived at the scene. Is that so? There's something about this statement that's not sitting right with me. The two mysteries of how that knife ended up in her back and how that book ended up in her hands. Completely wireless? Ooh, all you need is a small open area. Do you need those, like, um, those little sensors for a uh, VR motion thing to set up too? There must be some common thread between them. No! Whoa! I may look into that then. Because I really want a uh, Beat Saber. <laughs> um, can I ask you something, Mr. R Please, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Oh, um, yes, of course. What is it? You're, you're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell. Only 300? Ooh. Beat Saber's so much fun. I feel like it would be a good arm workout, too. What? I, I wasn't really... I mean, what's she doing? Please, just because I'm a woman doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word, I am. I got the Lincoln Park and Green Day DLC. How much did those cost? I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. Because I think the DLCs for Just Dance are ridiculously expensive. Like, all the free songs that they have is just like, okay. But then all the, like, the more pop... And, but there's a ton of songs you can unlock through DLC, and you have to pay a lot of money for it. And I was just like... Why would you do this? Ugh. No excuses. I don't want to hear it. My voice will be heard. My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? Yes, Mrs. B. I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. It was on sale when I got them. Uh, okay. Sometimes the path of least resistance is to sage one. That was a very loud mutter. I heard that. That Japanese man thinks a policeman's wife's word counts for nothing, does he? You guys are so racist. Well, watch out, sir. I might let you get away with something like that, but my brony won't. Duly noted, Mrs. B. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. What could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? Please be something incriminating. Please be something incriminating. I knew my eyes shall, my eyes shall be let me down, my sense of direction is a little off sometimes, too. Mrs. B, nobody is questioning what you've told us. I saw it, I did. That evening, I saw it clearly. That little Easter man with the whiskers and the funny curved back slinking away from the scene. Ha, <sighs> racist. <laughs> and I know what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying through the sky. As you've said before, I don't care. All very clear. You... You also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. Oh, yes, well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I'm always ending up at the wrong place when I've made arrangements to meet Rayleigh. He gets ever so cross. What you gotta say about that? Constable Beat, is there a problem? Uh, uh, huh? uh, no, sir. No problem, sir. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, um, well, in a way, sir. Yes, sir. I was just remembering that the same thing happened that evening, is all. 
You mean Mrs. Beat lost her way on the night of the incident? Well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box and the next beat over from mine. But she was gone a fair bit longer than what I was expecting. I thought she'd be back inside 10 minutes, but my darling was gone a good 15. Oh, Rowley, you're such a tease. But the reason I was so long was because of the bouquet, silly. The bouquet? Sorry, what bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for a wedding anniversary. Really so romantic. He saved it for it with farthings and halfpennies. Halfpennies. He found a gutter while doing his rounds. Green Day was nine dollar and Lincoln Park was fifteen, but that's because Lincoln Park has more songs in it. Like it's not just like two or three songs in that bundle, right? It's like a considerable number of songs, which I think is a good deal for DLC, unlike Just Dance, which I was thinking about getting Just Dance, but in the end, I didn't get it, and I got Ring Fit Adventure instead. Much more worth the money. Yes, how romantic. I've forgotten all about her until just now. How'd you, my darling? Ah! Hmm? Uh, oh, yes. But that was just between us. No talking about it anywhere else, darling. You have to promise. Uh oh, uh oh. Really? Oh. What about the bouquet? What was that all about? Constable Beat looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. It's a good workout too if you have open enough space you can move around a lot. Oh man, that sounds so fun! I'm afraid I can't offer any useful insight, Mr. Nadahodo. But I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Mrs. Beat about the bouquet. Mrs. Beat, this bouquet you just mentioned. I'd like you to add the details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. Was the bouquet made out of knives? <laughs> what happened was I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing my way for a while. Green Day comes with six songs and Lincoln Park comes with one of songs. That's not a bad deal for that price. Not bad. You mean drop the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. Oh, I was so upset. When we ran over and saw it was a woman with a knife in the back. I was so shocked I dropped the bouquet Rolly gave me. There's a dark spot where the street lights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then you went to the police box to report it to the policeman whose beat it was on? Yes, and I came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see? That's when I spotted my bouquet again. But the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, there was nowhere near the victim's body at all. Roly moved it! Roly moved the body! In case you need reminding, Mrs. Beat, the victim is not deceased. I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice calling me from the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably. That's right. Silly me, I've gone over to the wrong side of the street. Although I'm going to blame the bouquet this time, I can't think how I got there, I really can't. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of Briar Road to the opposite. Or the body did! Hmm, curious indeed. Isn't it? But the worst of it is, I forgot to pick the bouquet up again when we left the scene. That beautiful rose Paul Rowley bought me, but that changed from the gut that he spent so long collecting. By bouquet. Do you perhaps mean the sorry solitary rose? Hey, single roses are cute and romantic, okay? Calm down. Oh! Oh, yes! Yes, that's it! That's the bouquet Rowley bought me for our anniversary, with all bits of change he found at the gutter. Maybe just call it a rose. <laughs> Tell us, Lord Fancy, where did you come by the flower? According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Garadab household. In front of the Garadab's house? Although it wasn't noticed until the morning, as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. 
It was believed to be of no relevance to the case, since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Could I, could I have a bat now, please? Gutter Rose. <laughs> no, I think for good measure this row should be added to the court record as evidence. Someone move their body, Rolly move their body, what are you hiding? Bum, bum, bum. Oh. The anniversary bouquet has been entered into the court record, a present for Patricia Beat from her husband Rolly. The shock of seeing the stab victim caused Mrs. Beat to drop the rose where she stood. But it's a symbol of our love. I want it back after the trial. Do you hear me? I want it back. Good grief. Rest, rest assured that I, will, I shall do my very best to not, not to forget this beat. I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one minute. Nothing strange to report. This is what we pressed before and we got um, all that new information. Um... Uh, oh, I can examine this. An English rose. It's such a beautiful flower. Ugh, this is a rose, is it? I've never seen one before. Do you not take an interest in flowers, Mr. Nottawoodle? I wouldn't say that exactly, but I do know three types at least. Gosh, three? Yes, plum blossom, peach blossom, and cherry blossom. They all look so frickin' similar. Perhaps you should consider branching out, learning some of that art fruit tree based, for example. Okay, there's gotta be something I can examine. It's very stylish paper the flowers wrapped in, isn't it? It's just an old newspaper, Mr. Nadahodo. Oh, I suppose it's because I'm not used to seeing English prints. So it sits added to me. Ah, I see. Is something wrong? Oh, no, no. I was just thinking that if you wrap the stone baked sweet potato in an English newspaper, it might look like some sort of fancy cake. Ah, Susato-san, do you, you do love your cakes. Is there nothing else I can examine on this? Is this just gonna be the newspaper again? Yeah. Mm. There's gotta be something I'm missing. Mm. I'm gonna try the flower again. An English rose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so there's really nothing to examine here. I was hoping to like see if there would be like a broken piece of the knife here. But I don't think anything's in here. But then why would... Okay, so Rolly is obviously upset about... Um... He's upset about mentioning the bouquet. So this is where the victim was found, but this is where the items would have dropped. And the rose was found in front of the Garadub's house. That's why she went to get the other officer because it was on that other officer's beat and he could help with the investigation. Right? Wait, hold up. Um, didn't take my eye off. See, not the eye. Um, I did leave a scene to go fetch the help. Well, it was there to make the sh nothing was disturbed. What am I supposed to press here? I don't think I pressed the last statement again. Why? Um. Or do I present now? Wait, I'm gonna save. Uh, uh save just in case I screw something up. I believe I have enough evidence and stuff now. It's just showing which piece of evidence on which statement that's right. Losing my way for a while. Nothing strange to report on that front, sir. Uh, nothing was disturbed. Do I pres- I'm gonna try presenting the rose here. Nope! Wrong! I'm wrong! I'm sorry! No! Uh, no! I'm not gonna bother reading this because I'm wrong! Yes, yeah, stop shaking your head. I know it's wrong. Just let me... Let me just... Uh. Okay... Um... 
If anything was thrown out of the window, we would have seen it. Uh, a lot of Barbies go for the little top of the casements. What am I? Uh, what am I? Shut up! What am I evidence again? It's something to do with this. It has to be important. Police will strive to preserve the peace of the is a lot of beat. Plot trolling officer expected to walk 20 miles around his beat every day for the Federalist Community of Relations. Any crimes that fall under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. When the crime is discovered on this beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigation and help detectives. But he keeps saying that he's off duty. And if it's discovered on his beat, then he assists with initial investigations. So is it something like that? If anything was thrown out the window, we would have seen it. Make sure nothing was disturbed. Damn it, I don't know. Well, Mr. Madhoto, what do you make of all of this? Hmm, yes. The whole idea of an invisible attacker has been troubling me all along. But I believe I'm starting to get a picture of what really happened here now. The fourth book that had no business being at the scene of the crime made me sure that Mrs. Garrida was hiding something from us. But it's becoming increasingly clear that someone else had been hiding something from us as well. I think I may already be armed with everything I need to strike a decisive blow here. This time, it's going to expose the whole truth about this mysterious affair. Yeah, it's- Rolly moved the body! Beat Saber has more DLC, including BTS and Skrillex. Yeah, I see that they have, um, BTS and Blackpink, and actually a lot of K-pop songs. I was surprised. So, um, that's kind of why I want to get Beat Saber, because I know all the songs and I would like to dance to it. Alanda and Bobby is good for his word. Should I press the- no. So it has nothing to do with Garadab's top four. Which piece of evidence do I present at which statement? Ah, you would have seen it. My trusty Rolly was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. Happened when I dropped my K and ended up losing my way for a while. Anything like uh, nothing strange to report on that front, sir. Did I present the rose here? I'm, I'm gonna try it again. Oh! Okay, it was that. You claim, Constable Beat, that there was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene. But that cannot be. What? Well, what do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Mrs. B, you explained to the courts that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to that beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single sorry bloom can be so described, oh, oh, oh. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street, back into the gutter where it belongs. Rude. Mega? But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to the facts? No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. Constable Beat swore that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the bouquet belonged to me. It has nothing to do with the case. That's that's why Rolly didn't mention it, I'm sure. No, because sadly it's not only your bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way round. What are you talking about? Think about it. Besides Mrs. Beat's bouquet, there's Mr. Garadab's book. Mr. Garadab's copy of the Lion's Pride, which was thrown out the window by his wife. Would have struck the pane of the casement window and landed here on the west side of the street. And yet... It was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in the victim's hand. 
Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Mrs. B's bouquet should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime, on the east side of the streets. But in fact, it was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in front of Mr. and Mrs. Garadub's house. There's no logical explanation for those things. Unless somebody deliberately moved them. I also got Richie's plank experience? What's that? What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, sounds like you think my Rolly's done something wrong. Don't you listen to a word that scrawny lawyer says. What do you know about books and bouquets? Why should we care? It's nitpicking, that's what it is. Oh good, Mrs. Garadub's come round. You might call it nitpicking, Mrs. Garadub. But deliberately meddling with the scene of crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Tampering, Mr. Naruhodo. But the person responsible for ta this tampering cannot admit to it. For a very subtle but compelling reason. That's one where you take an elevator up to a skyscraper and then walk out on a plank? No, thank you. Tampering, you've barely heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend. Who would possibly have had cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there is someone who tampered with the scene of the crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. I remember when I did um, the Last Guardian VR. Um, there was a point where like, you're walking over like different rock columns outside of the main building that you found Trico. And I knew that there was a floor under me, but for the life of me, I couldn't step my foot off of the stone platform that I was on. Cause I thought I would fall to my death. But in my head, I'm like, no, there's a floor. I've seen it, I've walked on it. But after putting that VR headset on, I was just like, I can't move. I can't get off this. It was crazy. Counsel, I must demand that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for the tampering with the scene of the crime? I'm going to save. Even though I th think it's going to be Rolly. Uh, Rolly. I fell off the plank and it freaked me out, right? Because even though your, mi your mind's like, I know there's a floor, I'm playing at my house, but like, because you're seeing what your eyes see, it's just like, nope, you're wrong. You're gonna fall and die. Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Constable Rolly B, it was you. What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? What nonsense? Why would my Rolly do something like that? There's no one straighter than my husband. <laughs> That's what she said. No, Bobby works notoriously for the punk people of London. Mrs. Beats, you said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up! It's all nonsense! It's all lies! What about that Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him! He did it! If that was true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it. Forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Mrs. B, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Ah, well, well. First you make accusations about the landlord and his wife, and now you incriminate a policeman as well. But your accusations lack one very important thing. Evidence. You claim the crime scene was tampered with. But there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. That's right. He's right. But my husband and I just happen to be there, that's all. So why would we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense. You've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. 
Don't give up, don't give up. Constable B had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Narahodo, have you... have you managed to solve this mystery? Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. You made a serious accusation against an innocent Japanese man, so I don't see what the problem is, guys. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevocably... Irre irrevocably damaged. I can pronounce words. With that stark warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Yes, my lord. Constable Beast's motive for tampering with the crime scene was to hide. Where the bouquet fell? Right, because he didn't want anyone to mention the bouquet. No! The bouquet, uh... Um... Right, it is... It is the bouquet for the victim. Ah, frack! That's the bouquet of it. Um, I'm gonna say where the victim fell because after she dropped the bouquet. Wait, was the bouquet found on the other side? Uh. It. Okay. The bouquet was found in front of the building. And that's where the victim fell. And he wants to hide where the victim fell because he didn't move the bouquet. So I'm gonna say where the victim fell. Because then he'd have to investigate the thing and miss their wedding anniversary dinner. Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You, you may well she was attacked. What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Briar Road. We saw it happen, remember? But which side of the pavement? It was right here, as if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly what everyone has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? What? That's how the knife could have had the tip broken when it hit the window while Mrs. Garrett was throwing it out and then it just happened to like land on um, Olive Green. So if we go back to the site and if we find a piece of the broken knife, then it's like, okay, yeah, this really is where she fell. I don't know if they're gonna do that though. I'm beginning to wonder where this tumultuous trial will end, Council. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know my Nipponese friend. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening? Here, you dummy! <laughs> but... but that's... On the opposite side of the road. Why did the unconscious body cross the road? Cause someone moved it! Duh. I don't understand. On the evening in question, Mr. Garadov's book fell directly down from the open window above. And your bouquet, Mrs. B, never moved at all. What did move was the scene of the crime itself. Good, good gracious. Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. That's, that's right, I saw it, with my own eyes. Rowley is being suspiciously quiet this whole time. It was 5 o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was a typical London fog on the grounds. When you saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim's aid, that was actually on the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true. It, it can't have been. Constable B then, then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. 
And during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in his print, the victim herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the east side of Briar Road. Extraordinary. But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? The bouquet, I presume. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the rose bouquet. Lord Van Zeek said it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the steam lamps, street lamps cast no light. Yes, it couldn't have been seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was the, um, oh, it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Rowley Beat. Um, well, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to not off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? Oh, really? It isn't true, is it? What that lawyer said is all lies, is it? I know it is, because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know. I had a dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Everything. Come out. Everything. Exposed. Only, it seems, it wasn't a dream at all. Good, good golly! So it's true? All da, all da! What on earth is the meaning of all this? Oh really? Why? Why would you do something like this? Moving a corpse is, is, is a criminal offense, isn't it? She's not dead. Wishing the victim dead should be one too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. I can't say, sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all this. For damaging the yard's reputation. For... for everything. I have a possible explanation. For why, on that particular evening, Constable B felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. Racist! And yet, Lord Van Zeeks, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. England. Japan. It makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. What gives away the motive for Constable Beat's unthinkable actions? Isn't it the rose? Oh, gonna save just in case. It's either the um, rose or the um, the handbook because the handbook hasn't been used at all. The warrant card. Um, book. Okay, I'll do this book. <laughs> you were right, smooth. <laughs> I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land, and I've only just arrived from Japan. 
Which is why all this information about London's so-called Bobbies is completely new to me. I've learned that, though honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for the constable beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh yes. It was our very first wedding anniversary. Constable Beat had worked so hard to be able to afford the simple gift for his wife. And was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. When he and Mrs. Beat stumbled upon the crime along Briar Road. When he saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them. What must have gone through this man's what must have gone through this man's mind? What's up? Just like that particular day, I was looking forward to the same being my wedding anniversary. Me and Speed pushed up with your love being married to a bunny like me and want to show my dear wife how much you care. This is a warrant card that Constable B offered to lend to me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling pol policemen, it says When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Aha! Uh -huh. Constable B. Is that or is that not the reason why he moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. I was off a smidgen. No, you're totally on, man. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Oh. Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious. Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you have done? It, it was the first time since I became a copper that I'd ever cursed God. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal could still be lurking somewhere. As we ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as police officer. We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. When a crime was discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with his investi initial investigations to help detectives. I thought he did it for a promotion. I mean, I, I thought that too, but then I was just like, wait a minute, wedding anniversary, because like, only um, Pat really mentioned promotion, and he was just like, don't mention the bouquet, so... Why here? Why did this have to happen here? And more tonight, of all nights. Why? It's a corporal's job to guard the scene of the crime, so... I told Pat she'd have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then, when I opened my mouth to speak. It just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This next beat to mine, Pat. So you'll have to go to the police box that covers it, turn right along Mearsham Street, and then... So this was just an accident. Do, 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 do. I'm, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. 
constable. I, I just wanted, just that one night to make my Patricia to take my Patricia out for dinner. Oh really? Just that one night. You knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene out your ju outside your jurisdiction. Just across the street, to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring beat's care. You see, I... I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon? Oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my friend would never have left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. Ah, I see your meaning now. Well, God got me back from my sins, didn't he? That's why... That's why Mr. Rose I bought for Pat. Oh no, Rowley. That was all my fault. I should never have dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Rowley. And can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from one side of the road to the other in total? Hmm? Oh, um, four. It was. Yes, sir. Definitely four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsumit, and the fourth. Being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garrett-up household, of course. But, what made you place that book in the victim's hands? When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, sir, that's because that's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hands. You're sure it was this book, The Lion's Pride, that the victim was holding? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. The fourth book... Why is it being updated? Why? Aren't we done? It was an accident. Mrs. Garadup threw the knife out and it hit the lady. Uh, say sorry for to the defendant as well. I know, for real. After calling him, like, constantly calling him shifty, like, mysterious, like, shady Japanese man. Say sorry. That's so racist. I thought it was an open or shut case at the time, you see. There were only the two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. However which way you looked at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who'd done it, I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. I didn't think moving it all over the road would make a jot of difference. I... I suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. My lord. Yes, Lord Van Zix. I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses. Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Prosecutor, sir. What will become of my Rowley? What will happen to him? For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Please, don't punish my husband. This, this is all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late. And now they'll make labor laws to make the policeman's work easier. Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. All right then, my love. One last thing, Constable. Sir? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir.
have that lesson in your mind. And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Ah, oh, never again, sir. You, you mean to say... Leave, now. The trial is not yet over. Oh, um... Sir! Oh, and he's gonna be like, just because the body moved doesn't mean that it necessarily wasn't Natsume that stabbed her. We have to prove where the knife came from. Frag! Well, quite startling revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party transplanting the entire scene of a crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here, principally. But the accused, Mr. Sosuke Natsume, is the only person who could possibly have committed this crime! It was an accident! No, I disagree! Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there is someone else. Another person who could be responsible for the knife in the victim's back! Forgive me for being presumptuous. But I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of this possibility already. Lord Van Zeeks, is this true? Very well. Name the person, if you will, and a further investigation is warranted. The prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. You are named this other person who could have perpetrated the crime. Duh. The defense would once again like to request the cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. Is he the prosecutor's detective gumshoe? I think so. <laughs> once again. My assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case, it's imperative that we cross-examine the juror number four, Mrs. Joan Gardab. Me! Me! Oh, dear me! That request has already been denied. But the situation is very different now. Mrs. Garadab, answer me this. Just, I don't want to cross-examine you. Just tell us the truth so that we can be done with this. What do you want now, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Garadub. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited. And to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened the window that looks out over Briar Road. But what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the open topped, top hinged casement window, the book plummeted directly down. Bean pulled to Toad Man, she hates him. Yeah, she does. Finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I said, what of it? During that argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Garadab. This knife. The one removed from the victim's back. Have you really never laid eyes on it before? Oh. I will smack you if you keep hiding the truth or lie to us. I don't recall it. I will smack you. Seriously? Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? Why do we not just call the husband to be like, is this your knife? This is so frustrating. And anyway, the man over there and all that regalia said members of the jury need to testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. <laughs> Judge Dreadtoast. <laughs> no, I have no recollection of saying that at all. Juror number four. Oh, what? What is this? Oh. Make no mistake. You jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial process. 
If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. I don't want to cross-examine. I don't want to cross-examine. But, but that's just a common old garden knife. Common or garden knife? Is that common old? Typo. It could have come from anywhere. We have several like that at home. If, if one were missing... How would you expect me to know? What's that? Are you joking? What are you saying? Please, Miss Garden. Now you listen to me. I, I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that I injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it. But you clearly slapped your husband and threw things at him, so you, you know, what, what? Oh, the poor woman. So, yes, I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence if you're going to insist on this being my fault. You're going to have to prove to me that I threw that knife if that's what you think. Come along now, top top. Do your worst. Um, well... Well, Mr. Nadohuro? If, if I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown at her already. Then take to the stand, Jura. Oh. Or call the husband! The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Vanzix. I... I'm going to have to testify. No, I don't want to testify anymore. I don't want to cross-examine. Jura number four. As I'm sure you will appreciate, having observed it with your own eyes today. Witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truth being unearthed. If her husband died from it, this trial would never have happened. I know, right? I like how you don't want to play the game anymore. No, I want to play the game. I just don't want to do this trial anymore because in my head, I'm just like, it's an accident. Done. Like, we're done. It's an accident. No one committed murder. But they just keep dragging it out! <laughs> Truths of which the witnesses themselves may not even have been aware. Oh dear me! So I demand that you are full and unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Garadab. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsels? Excuse me. Certainly, my lord. Oh, um, that's what I'm hoping for, my lord. Just tell us the truth. Tell us the truth! Jelly's going to get cross-examination PTSD. This is such a strange feeling. <laughs> but the first time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. I'm here, in the old Bailey. And I'm a lawyer. Mother flippin' she's gonna testify. Witness, state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes, my name is Jane Garrett. And I'm, um, well, I'm a juror and such like. Sounds like even she doesn't know if she's a housewife or a maid or what anymore. Ah yes, inner monologue. I'm a real lawyer. <laughs> the court has decided your testimony is required in order to clarify matters in this case. Do you understand, madam? Yes, my lord. You will tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. And I warn you, do not attempt to hide the truth. Oh, oh, dear me. Chill up, Joni. Nothing to worry about now. Oh, I didn't know you were here, John. <sighs> You'll be at the checkout. The guys will want to check this item again. You will scream. <laughs> <laughs> was it only you in the room that day, old thing, was it? Rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? But what about your knee, dear? Don't you worry about that. Hardly notice it. 
I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. Oh, John. I presume you are Mr. John Garadub. Yes, sir. Former second lieutenant of the 3rd Regiment of the 4th Northumberland Fusiliers, sir. Seen my fair share of action and now living a quiet life, as it were. The quiet life? Were you not engaged in an incendiary battle with your spouse on the day in question? Ah, oh, well, yes, <clears throat> quite. I believe this may represent the first time in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. However, the court will hear your testimony now, juror number four, and that of your husband. You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your home at the time of the incident in question. Sir, at once. Mother flipping! Yes, on the day you're referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. Because you cheated! Well, she thought you cheated. Not a candlestick over it, set fire to the carpet. Soon headed out with her and got the window open. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Chicken tuna, long time no see! Hi! Hope you've been well. Happy Thursday! Happy September! Plenty of knives around our place. Can't say I notice if one or two went missing, I'm afraid. How are you? I am super tired because I started working out using Ring Fit Adventure and my muscles are sore as heck. How are you? If that Bolly thing went in the victim back was really one of ours, you'd have a job proving it, I think. Virtual hugs! Me. Hmm. It sounds as though it was quite the battlefield in your household that evening. Although an entirely one-sided assault, it seems. The enemy caught us under hopes, hops, sir. Had no choice but to dig in and take the defensive measures. To be honest, if the enemy had kept shelling us for another minute, we'd have been toast. I can read. Of course, a veteran such as myself. It's only too aware that on every battlefield, you're just a nuts whisker from death at any moment. Are we still talking about a Marilyn quarrel here? Well, I must say I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus narrows such that surroundings are barely noticed. These witnesses may not be able to offer anything more than they have testified already. This may be a dead end. Go to his house, see if there's a broken piece of knife. Fancies may well be right. Well, whatever the chances. We only have this last cross-examination to uncover the truth, Mr. Dotto. Oh, no. Yes, I'm afraid so. But well, counsel, begin your cross-examination. The only thing, okay, so the only possible way I could see this happening is that I get them so riled up that they talk about like throwing things again. Can't recall the reason now. I know the reason. The reason is what you told us yesterday, I believe. Yes, that's right. If I remember correctly, it all started because of a note that was tucked into the pages of a book belonging to Mr. Garrida. A rather passionate note, in fact. But Mrs. Garrida found a note, discovering her husband's little secrets. And she gave him a mighty number of slaps across the face for it, too. What a sordid state of affairs. Hell on earth. I say, what a chap says he can't recall such things, it's common decency not to drag it all off. And besides, half of us the... Uh... Well, it's wide of the mark, anyway. A likely story. These waters run very deep. And what transpired next after these multiple blows to the face? Knock the canister covers, the fire, the window open. 
And the fire also spread to some items of furniture, didn't it? The bookcase, my armchair, anything of mine, really. Just so happens there was some bath water around that evening, so I splashed out about to put it out. A most precarious situation you put yourself in. Ours is a three-story townhouse on the west side of the street, where the water main isn't connected yet. Have to draw water from the public water pump during the day, if you need any, you see? She still does not believe him. She doesn't. Not a happy marriage they have. The lodgers are all moaning that they can't, can't get any water at night. Although, that little moustache Japanese man buys water in bottles, I believe. The defendant, Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, he receives a stipend for his studies, you know, from his home country. Can you imagine being able to brew a pot of tea at all hours? He's obviously very well off. Have you actually seen the state of the man? I believe he uses all of his income to buy books. Well, anyway, the point is, I was able to douse the fire with water, fortunately enough. Blah, 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 blah. <gasps> Even though the room was on fire? As far as I was concerned at the time, it was more important to extinguish my anger than the flames. When a woman wants to throw, she must throw. That is most certainly not true of a success of takedown, Mr. Nanahoro. How did she know I was thinking that? So, please cast your mind back and try to remember. What's knife among the items that you threw at your husband that day? This is like the third time they brought a knife, and she's going to say no, because she doesn't want to believe that she hurt someone. Gosh. In all honesty, I don't recall. But I feel I must point out that I'm no monster. Let me see. Some bread, a cabbage, garlic, a towel, and a sponge. A napkin. No, you did not. You did not throw those things. Do you have something to add, sir? Mr. Garadub! Hmm, uh, don't shoot! Oh, sorry. I beg your pardon. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind? <laughs> Excuse me. Nothing of any significance, no. Just that the barrage of projectiles the old thing launched in my direction was somewhat more solid than she implies. Books, bricks, and the fire poker, I seem to recall. Ouch. And the woman's aim is uncanny. She landed a direct hit with everybody. Ah! Good grief, woman, we're not at home now. This is a court of law. Oh, dear me. Ever so sorry, dear. What's she even doing with the teapot in here? Honestly, John, I would never have done such things like you, obviously. Well, take a look at this, then. How do you suppose this happened, hmm? Your pipe, sir. Have to sting in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked the clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did, yes. And when I went to pick the thing up, it was broken in two. I'd like to see a sponge to that sort of damage. I see, your pipe was broken. It would never have been seen flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Anyway, I've managed to bandage the thing up for now. <sighs> you don't want to exaggerate, aren't you, dear? Hmm, I wonder what we should make of this account. It is important, duh! The defense believes Mr. Garadab's remarks just now to be of great significance. This war veteran's words only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife and pipes as well as hearts may be broken. Sentimental wisdom perhaps, but hardly worthy of adding to the formal testimony. Indeed, common sense one might say. Might one? In that case, would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? We're gonna find the broken piece of the knife! Hmm, well, I don't see why not. Oh, dearie me, there 
Here you go again. Try to ingratiate yourself with a young lady. Very well. The court will accept the gentleman's pipe as evidence. Thank you! Hope I didn't speak out of turn, Mr. Naruhodo. Examine. Oh my gosh. It looks to be in a sorry state with that bandage around it, doesn't it? But for some reason, it feels slightly ominous to me, like it's trying to shout out a warning. Probably because it's the same blue as Mr. Garadup's dressing gown. I suppose it must have been considerable. But it must have considerable sentimental value to Mr. Garadup, given that he's gone through the trouble of repairing it like this. Either that, or he can't afford to replace it. Okay, what say you about the nick here? There's a small nick out of the bowl here. Look, it appears to have been made relatively recently. And see how there are little scrapes and dents all over it? It's clearly a well-loved pipe. Yes, you're right. It seems to me recently that being well-loved goes hand-in-hand -hand with getting some battle scars. This particular nick is catching my eye, though. Because it's clearly new. Oh my gosh, thank the lord! We found it, we found it! Oh, something just twinkled inside the chamber of the pipe there. Yes, I saw it. Something stuck in there, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. What? what's this? It's a tiny fragment of metal. It looks like the tip of a blade or something. Ugh. Well, he has a sword and the other guy is drinking wine, so the teapot is not that odd, really. I know, right? It's just like, they're British, they'll drink tea, whatever. The tip of a blade, surely, it couldn't be. Fragments of metal! We got it, we got it, we got it. Hey, 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 hey. This is the tiny piece of metal we found in the chamber of Mr. Garadup's pipe. It looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade. Is something wrong, Mr. Nadohodo? I don't really know. There's just something niggling me, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. Perhaps in that case, it would be wise to examine some of the other pieces of evidence again. Really, that's all you're gonna tell me? Can I like combine it now? <gasps> Mr. Maruhuru, look, your cherish machine. Whoa, where did we see the tip of a brain before? Oh, look here, Mr. Naruhuru, just at the tip. A small piece of the blade appears to be missing. Wait, part of it's missing? I could be wrong. I've just got a feeling. You remember this? Oh, that's... cross examining knife? Heck yeah. That's a tiny fragment of metal that we found inside Mr. Garadup's pipe! Yes, and just maybe... Oh my! It's a perfect fit! Somehow I just knew it! I just, this is why I didn't want to do the cross-examination because I already knew what had happened! I was just feeling rather disappointed for you that your request is turned down. Oh, no, it's fine. Thanks to Susato san, we have some new evidence to work with. We should examine it carefully. Well, thank you for that. Rebuttal, Mr. Garadab. Now, if we could return to the crux of the matter. What can you tell the court about the knife used to attack the victim? Plenty of knives around our place, can't say I noticed one or two missing, I'm afraid. Um... If that ballet thing hit the back of the woods with the valves, you'll have a drop pooping, I think. I will present, um... Uh... But, 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 you so screwed, you are so done. Mr. Garadub, could I ask you to take a look at this, please? You can ask, but I can't see a bally thing. You can't? used to call me Dead-Eye Dead back in the regiment, of course, but that was some time ago now. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days. I struggle to tell a B from a D and a P from a Q, to be honest. No, he does. Dear me, it's rather wearing being asked about every other letter and every other word. You must D very dozzy. <laughs> 
What is that? A tiny scrap of metal. Yes, almost certainly from the tip of a blade. And what may appear at first just to be a tiny scrap is in fact a crucial piece of evidence. Interesting. And where did the defense come by this evidence? It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Garadab's pipe. My pipe, say? By Jove, I wonder how it got in there. And what precisely does this fragment of metal signify, Council? Are you suggesting that it is in some way related to the matter of stabbing of the stabbing on Briar Road? I am. What? Why put together with another piece of evidence already at the court record? I believe this tiny fragment of metal will unravel the whole truth of the case, my lord. Ha! Ah, she's standing on a box! Hmm, you appear rather self-confident in that extraordinary statement, Council. Oops, there's no self in there, I just added words. Very well then, present the pertinent evidence to the court. What evidence, when paired with this fragment of metal, allegedly reveals the truth of this entire case? But doom! This case is done! This is night that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you'll see that there's a small piece at the tip of the blade that is missing. A common issue with the inferior blade sold at unsavory street markets. Criminals who use them regularly leave the tips lodged in their victim's bones. And what of this particular knife? No doubt that Stiff had suffered a similar fate, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. No, that's not the case. The tip of this particular knife's blade is the very fragment of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Garadab's pipe. Ah! Oh! Good grief, Lord Van Zeeks! I... I don't believe it. The knife from the crime scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match. Good... Good golly gosh! Wait, the back of his robe is like all, um... all burnt and whole. Oh, he was on fire, haha. <laughs> oh, duh! Is, is this some sort of Eastern sorcery? I'm gonna slap everyone. Oh my gosh, do you, none of you have common sense. This is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. A miracle? So Van Zeex has figured it out, has he? Council, explain this extraordinary coincidence at once. What? East what? I know, right? They're all so racist! <laughs> Yes, my lord, the crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Garadab's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent witness testimony. Had to stick in my hand as well at the time of the onslaught. You have to clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did. I've never been sent flying unless I was hit by something pretty solid. Oh, dearie me. During the argument between these two that occurred just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mrs. Garda flung this knife at her husband. However, the knife missed Mr. Garda and spent striking the pipe in his hand at the time. Which caused the tip to break off, of course. Good lord. Yes. And that is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garadab's pipe. The, the chances of that are a million to one! And yet there's no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted off the pipe and flew out the open window. Are you using Easter magic to steam this? Teach, teach me. <laughs> Of course, don't you know, all Eastern people, all Asian people have magic. <laughs> oh. 
In short, this knife, which fell from the window of the Gyarados house, is the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the back on the street below. Oh gosh! Oh dear! Oh. No. Yeah, the back of his robe is all scorched. <laughs> Objection what? He lost. That's what happens. A full body theory, I'll give you that. Don't impede me, man. A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points plausibly arranged to create an almost passable vintage. Then what do you think happened, you idiot? Allow me to toast my learned friend's characteristically Nipponese approach to bottling his arguments. Sorry? But after all, it is just a theory. The bottle, I fear, is corked. Because you see... It's spoiled by an insurmountable inconsistency. An insurmountable... What? What are you talking about? Lord Van Zeex, explain yourself. What is this inconsistency you claim to have identified? An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. The victim was found with the knife planted in the middle of her back. How could you have gotten there if you threw it from the top? Because she was picking up a book, you idiot! Yes, and her... Ah. That's right, you silly little man! Now, Joe little thing, what are you getting so excited about? Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. If the knife that struck her had fallen from above... There's no possible way it could have implanted itself in the victim's back. This is not a thing to freak out about. This is common sense. She was picking up the book. She was hunched over. The knife fell. She totally fell over. This isn't hard! This is- Order. Quite right, you see, that's exactly right. If the knife had fallen her from above, it would have struck her on the top of her head. Well, um... I only have 110% Asian, so I know nothing. <laughs> He's not for words. No! It's so simple! It is common sense! This is not hard! I don't know why people are freaking out! Oh my gosh! This is so infuriating! See, this is what I mean when... Th these are the parts of Phoenix Wright games that I don't like. It's clearly... You know how it happened, but they're going to just like... Be like, like what Van Zeeks is doing. Oh, have to get her in the back. Oh, this could be possible if you fell from the top. Like, can you think? She had the book in her hand. Like, oh my, ugh. But a the defense has made a rather spectacular blood. No, it's not a blunder! If a theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. Your theory, my learned friend, is his, it's not! I'm getting really hot. We were so close. I could see the truth. I was so sure we were on the right track. But now in the way has been blocked completely by just one simple inconsistency. It's not inconsistent. Or in other words, we simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency and the theory will stand. Miss Susato. You mustn't worry, Mr. Naruhodo. You're just caught off guard, that's all. And your mind went blank. I'm not caught off guard at all. I know exactly what is happening. I am I am of sound mind. And lucid thinking. That's why I've dropped out of these games. Squeeze again as much time as they can. Yeah, they just want to put in all the dialogue they can. Oh gosh. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. The key to this is in the court record, I'm sure. All the information you need is there. It seems you have nothing to say, my Nipponese friend. Well, your silence speaks for- I will break this controller, holy crap, I'm this aggravated. A task 
accepted acceptance that your theory is fatally flawed. I will literally break my controller. You are pissing me off so much. This inconsistency doesn't mean I was I was on the wrong track. I I'm it means I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test. Yes. If the knife fell on the victim from above, there's no way it could have hit her in the middle of her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. What are you implying? Counsel? There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. That can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. Remember when Jelly guessed about the knife like two streams ago? I know! It's... It's... It's common sense! It's... It's not a, a mind-boggling mystery! Like how Mr. McGillan's thing was crazy mystery. This is... This is just so... Also, hi Kirby. How are you doing? Happy Thursday. We already have the answer. Goodness. Utter, utter madness. Surely this must be the last time. Counsel, present the evidence of what you speak. This is the last inconsistency. The final piece in the puzzle. If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. The evidence that explains how the falling knife became lodged into the victim's back is the frickin' buck! It was found in the victim's hand when Mr. Blah 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 blah! Definitely a filler case. Yeah, it makes. <sighs> this is definitely filler. It's annoying. Honestly, after finish uh, Justice for All, I'm taking a week break before playing the last game. The last case did annoy me. Yeah, the last case in Phoenix Wright 3, I was just like, what the hell is this? It just. My brain was dead. Because I was like, oh, so this to this is this. It should have been just like easy A to B to C, but they went A to like A1, A2, A3, B, B1, 2, 3, 4, 5, C. They made so many like points before you got to the end. And I'm just like, yeah, duh, no way. If you're not having fun, JT, then you could just drop it. Oh no, I'm having fun. It's just this case is stupid. I still want to find out what happened to McGilded. This, the fourth book found at the scene. This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. The burnt book. Is that not Mr. Gardup's book? Yes, and to understand its significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene in the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question. And the victim holding it in her hands. But as we all know, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers like, No, he didn't. Quite so, as part of his wholesale transplanting of the crime scene to the opposite side of the road. That's true. However, as part of his testimony, Constable B made an extremely enlightening statement on that point. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? Yeah, well, so... That's because that's how I found it. When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. In other words, the victim had already picked the book up of her own volition. And clearly, that must have been before she suffered a knife wound. Well, I should say so. After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she'd have been doing much of anything. So the question becomes, why did the victim have that book in her hands? By... by Jingo! I... I think I'm beginning to see what may have happened now. Oh dear me! We know that the book fell from the top floor of the garret of household onto the pavement below. At the precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. Yes, at the at exactly that moment. The young woman was walking along the street in the light fog. When all of a sudden, a book fell right in front of her. The book 
Kai Fu. Yes, Mrs. Garadet, and what do you think the woman did? What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavements? Well, I... I really can't imagine it, but I suppose... She might have reached down and picked the book up. Yes, that is exactly what the woman in fact did. She picked up the book. Oh, oh heavens! And when the woman reached down to pick the fallen book up, what position would her back have been in? That's right, facing the sky completely and utterly defenseless. Then, in the very next moment, while the woman was still bent over picking the book up. Picking up the book. The next object fell from the room above. The jackknife straight into the middle of her back. And all at that same time, walking by chance directly behind Mrs. Green. Miss Green was the defendant, Mr. Sosaki Natsume. Well, I never. It appeared to Mr. Natsume that the woman simply collapsed on the floor. In the dark and the fog, he didn't see the knife falling on her from above. Ah. And from the other direction, the constable and his wife saw no one but the victim and her apparent attacker. So there never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No, this was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that culminated in an unfortunate accident, like I've been saying. And that is the real truth behind this case. Thank the Lord, this case is done. Well, Mr. Mrs. Garadub. The very first time you showed me that knife, I... I had my suspicions. Yes, but where's your evidence? Shh, Regal. Shh. <laughs> Notice yourself, stop picking up things falling to the ground. Yeah, just don't touch it. Because you don't know what germs are on there either. Not safe. I wondered if perhaps it might have been something like that. There, there, old bean. Poor Miss Garadab. Of course, I never meant for anything of the sort to happen, but... It was all my fault, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Now calm your temper. And don't throw weapons or anything at anyone else, unless they're an attacker and you're trying to get away from them. I take full responsibility. I let my anger get the better of me. I threw that book. And I threw the knife as well. John, dear. It's all right. I know. I'm... I'm ever so sorry. Truly. I'm sorry! Ha, <laughs> he can't lift her anymore. <laughs> These wives need to control their anger. Put in a newspaper. <laughs> Buddy toast. I don't want to see his butt. No, thank you. Lord Von Zeese, what news of Mrs. Gardub? She's been taken to the infirmary. It would appear that today's events had left her in an especially flustered state. But Eric's butt? Yes. <laughs> Give me Eric's butt. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There is no cause for concern. Yes, unbeknownst to themselves, they caused what could have easily been a terrible tragedy. They shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. There is some good news, however, my lord. I have just had word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition is improving steadily, and the doctor believes she will regain consciousness soon. It's strange, we've been talking about the victim all this time, but 
We've never once met her. How wonderful! The woman is out of danger, it seems. Yes, that is good news. So, Mr. Sosaki Natsume. Oh, um, yes! On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. Sorry we were so freaking racist to you. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our great British Empire. I have been repaid with immeasurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. NOT ACCEPTED! No, it is me who should be begging your pardon. Oh, no, Mr. Natsume. That evening, when the young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes, I... I jumped to the wrong conclusion again, in my confusion. What conclusion, sir? I was sure that the woman was dead. Yes, Constable Beats said the same thing, didn't he? He thought she had been killed, too. Mm, Van and Von Karma relative, I wonder? Oh, possibly. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I still can't get used to life here. I... I can't relax. I'm sure there are evil spirits lurking in the fog. Like they're haunting me. Poor Sosaki-san. His imagination really has got the better of him. Yes, poor man. So when it happens... I thought the young woman had been taken by the fog spirits. I should never have dropped my books like that and run away! I should have called for help! For a doctor! For the police! Instead, I've managed to create a rift in the relationship of trust between our two empires. And for that, I am truly sorry. Nah, it's all good, dude. One could indeed say the same sort uh... That some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. Poor Sosa Kazan. Jelly would never say that. She loves seeing him scared to death. <laughs> I do. He has a funny face. One that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were befooled by the spirit and led to false conclusions. But thanks to Lord Van Zeeks and our young lawyer here from the East. What do you mean thanks to him? That chain has now been broken and the spirit exercised. I did all the work. I heartily commend you both. I did the work. Oh. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord. In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decisions regarding the defendant's culpability. Are you ready to present your findings to the court? As the foreman of the jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion. Now teach me your magic. <laughs> I do declare the truth can be extremely cruel at times. Well, I didn't suspect the woman next to me, that's for sure. Sitting in for the old bean while she's down of action, you know, but I know what her decision will be. This would mean I'll finally be able to get out of here and start work. What's about time? I say, I'll have a cool of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? But well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby demand your final decisions. Mr. Foreman. This common seance thing will take long, I know for real. Not guilty, not guilty. But well, Mr. Sosuke Natsume, I hereby pronounce you... I've done it. I have won. Take that, Van Zeeks!
The whole fire throwing seems dangerous. I know, right? They're inside a building. They're throwing fire. It's crazy. And finally, Mr. Masume. Oh, yes, Lord, sir. Take that. <laughs> you are now a free man once more. It is my hope that you will continue to further your education in British culture. And may you never again be brought before me. Take this! Take this! Oh, oh, yes, sir. Of course. On my life, I swear I'll never set foot in a courtroom again! I'm... Transported to tears! What if they throw it on the wrong side by mistake? I know, right? They just all go boom and it magically goes where they want? Weird. Thank you, councils. Court is adjourned. He did it. He did it. Did he just dab? Heck yeah, he did. <laughs> I don't care. Ho, oh, locum. <laughs> My name's not locum. Wait, you you mean me? <laughs> of course. Is there another locum here? Is there even one? <laughs> Compared to the original locum student, Mr. Nadahoro Esquire, your name has been become rather short, hasn't it? Boss a check, virtual hugs, bump. <laughs> Where's the jelly dab reward? Dab! <laughs> What's wrong with using my actual name? Oh, that's last. I'm free! I'm free! Joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! Heady, hearty, happiness, hurrah! Oh, I am pleased. Mrs. Natsumi is delighted. Would it be so hard just to say that then? Locum, you did it! You saved me from the brink! Well, what happened to the poor woman was in no way your fault, after all. I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, 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 not that! Lovely, loyal Locum lawyer! Um, yes? I mean, as I said before, I've just never got used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners. I see towering brick buildings. And from high up windows, I see them looking down on me, laughing. Look at that little hunchback. Oh dear. I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. But! Today, you local lawyer gave my gloom the boot. You stood firm behind that baronial bench before all those babbling British. You battle to the bitter end, laying bare the baffling truth. And when I beheld the blinding fireworks among the beams of the Bailey's roof, I bellowed. Behold, the best barrister ever born. Well, that's very flattering, and we're very pleased for you. This has given me a wonderful anecdote to recount to my old friends back in Japan. Ah, an anecdote? Is that what's to become of all my hard work? Ah, there you are, my dear fellows. Oh! I apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, what a pleasure to see you! I see I'm here not a moment too soon. A disaster has been averted, I'm glad to say. Oh! The trial shall begin presently, Mr. Narahuru, and I wish you the very best of luck. What trial? It's just finished. What? No! That my haste was in vain! Arr, it's... it's... you! Herlock Sholmes! Oh? Have we met, sir? Um, this is Mr. Natsume. The man you had arrested, Mr. Sholmes? Ah, I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom, either of your bleak lodgings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face. In light. Charming. This is all your fault, Herlock Sholmes! You're the reason I had to go through this terrible ordeal. I'm, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. My apologies, sir, but I assure you, I've placed you now. You're the fellow who abandoned that poor young lady and ran off, are you not? Ah. Uh. Had she been taken to the hospital more urgently? I fear perhaps.
perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh. But it was unavoidable, I'm sure. We are but human, after all. Anyone would have been shaken by such experience. <laughs> I do feel very badly about how I behaved. Well, never mind. Now then, what was it that you wanted to say to me, sir? Nothing. <laughs> Priceless! Oh, I am sorry, really, but... Charming toast. <laughs> that was quite priceless. Poor Sosaki-san. Still, on the bright side, you've had an extremely entertaining experience without paying a penny. And, it would seem, you were not even found guilty. But there is no bright side. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Natsume? Can we just end this conversation now, guys? Come on. Even after this, I'm... I'm still cursed by the spirits and... and now by the Reaper! Ah, Lord Van Zeeks. I haven't forgotten, you know, when face that man in court means. Oh, what face that man in court means. Even if you're found not guilty, you're still doomed! It... It will be all right. Oh, yeah, that's just a door. It will be all right, Mr. Natsume. Hmm? If the Reaper appears trying to make trouble, I will protect you. Hiya. Charming. With a perfectly ex executed Susazo takedown. <laughs> Much as I like being turned on my head, a bit of warning might be nice next time, Mrs. Sato. So, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about recounting your experiences to your friends back in Japan. Why did Sholmes come in here? There was no reason for him. Yes, I, I intend to return to my homeland soon. Oh! And it's already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. I visited universities, libraries, bookshops. I've been honored with the tutelage of professors. I've learned so much about the wealth of literature here, and the city has shaped. It has shaped. And I've come to realize that it's my calling to sail home and tell my fellow countrymen about it. That's very touching, Mr. Natsume. Or, in perhaps less fair terms, you wish to withdraw halfway around the world to escape the terror of the Reaper's curse. Mm. That's not it at all! <laughs> the more I learn of literature, the more this strange feeling clots my insides. I feel compelled to return to my roots, and attempt to pen a work of my own. Oh, I see. A work of literature by Sosaki-san. Could be an interesting read. And what about Miss Susato and yourself, Mr. Nadohuru? Sorry? What about us? Will you return to Japan alongside your mustached compatriot? Why would we? A week has not yet passed since we arrived in London. And only now does it feel as though we have finally found our feet. And you are accommodated in a hotel at present, are you not? That's right, but we need to find lodgings before it bankrupts us. I've calculated we can only afford another 10 nights before our entire budget is exhausted. Well then, you can take my lodging- nope. Oh, the windowless room? Ah, oh, but what it lacks in windows. It more than makes up with a floor, a ceiling, and walls. Great. And of course, I'd have to leave behind the accursed evil spirit. <laughs> what time is it? Oh man, please, I'd want to- I want this to end! Oh my, an evil spirit! Oh yes. It tries to suffocate you while you sleep. It's... it's... an infallible wake-up call! Do you mean your cat? We'll think about it. If that's alright. Perhaps I can offer a more welcome alternative. Would you consider taking lodgings with me? 
Really? Well, a vacancy has conveniently presented itself. Then it is up to the attic, I might add. Up in the attic. Are you sure it isn't just a storage loft? I spoke at the landlady this very morning on the matter of price, and Oris is cleaning the room as you speak. You must come at once. I presume you have no luggage to speak of. Oh, this is simply wonderful. What an honor to be invited to taking lodgings in the great detective's office. Attic! I'm... I'm too overcome for words. So suggesting we look elsewhere is out, then. But it's settled. Iris will prepare a welcome dinner this evening. And you must come too, Mr. Nasume. I insist. I... 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 don't know what to say. But thank you. And yes! Wonderful! And I'll go and complete the paperwork for your formal release, Mr. Natsume. It shan't take long. Somebody's happy. Please, just end the conversation. Please, end it! Locum. I... I knew that you wouldn't let me down. I'm truly delighted to have met you here in London. Sorry, you could go. Just, just leave. Likewise, Mr. Nasume. It's been a privilege meeting you too. It's a shame that we're going to have to say goodbye so soon. Well, I've come to realize that I belong in Japan. But welcome. We'll meet again one day. Yes, I'm sure. And hopefully by then, I'll be a successful lawyer. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful author. <laughs> That's cute. I require... I require a kiss for entry! <laughs> well then, mighty fellow, our carriage appears to have arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes, Mr. Shams. I've little doubt Mr. Mas Mr. Natsume will be released in time for dinner this evening. So we're gonna just leave, um... Uh... Susato here too? And so... With Soseki-san's innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. Sholmes to what was to become our new home, 221B Baker Street. No, no, just stop, just stop. Oh, what have we done? What have we done? The attic room. Egad's a dead body. Dun dun dun! So this. Good job, thank you. It's to be a new office, yes! Our office? I really like the sound of that. Me too! It's simply wonderful, isn't it? I hope you can see this, Kazuma. <gasps> it's only a salsa! What is she looking at? Oh, she's just looking at the room. But I'd like to think we're getting a little closer to your dream now. So, my dear fellows, do you like the place? Have we ever seen him without his hat? Ooh, it's pretty good looking. <laughs> ah, Mr. Sholmes, thank you so much. It's a delightful room, Mr. Sholmes. It's simply the door. Good, I'm pleased to hear it. Iris and I are delighted to welcome you. Lusty toast. <laughs> I hope everyone's hungry. It's nearly time for dinner. He can't come in here. <laughs> we'll be as soon as Mr. Natsume arrives. We have a lot to celebrate. Iris, you must let me help you. All right then, Susie. You can be in charge of the salad. Splendid. I require a kiss. <laughs> time for the smooches. So, Mr. Nathodo, how does it feel? Have your own office at the capital. It's very exciting, actually. Can't help wondering what adventures await us. Ha 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 ha! Those were precisely my sentiments when I first established my office at these premises. Until I discovered the dark truth about the city of London, that is. Sorry? London is a glorious place full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and mirth. But the brightness of lights, the brightest of lights, cast the darkest of shadows. 
What is this, Lord of the Rings? Shadows? What do you mean? Well, I believe you're well aware of the murkiness that lies behind London's facade already. So once again, Mr. Narahudo. Welcome to London. Have a good night, Spoo. Thanks for joining. Thanks for staying up so late. What is this? Kingdom Hearts? Fixed. <laughs> of course, at the time. I had no idea of the significance of those words Mr. Sholmes so casually spoke. But it wasn't long before my turn came. To lift the facade and see the true depth of the murk that lay behind it. Case 4 done! Now all we have left is case 5 and then we move on to the second part. Landed in London. Save of progress. Yes. Heck yes. I did it! Oh my gosh. Uh, Adventure of the Unspeakable Story. That'll have to happen uh, next time because I've already <gasps> It's been over two hours and 45 minutes. Holy crap. Yeah, I need to get ready to sleep. I am lit tired. So we finally finished it. Case four is done. It was kind of stupid, but but hey, one more case for uh, part one. And then we move on to part two. Whee! So anyways, that's it for me tonight. Uh, I will pick this up again on Tuesday. Woo -woo. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. Have a great weekend. Bye. -bye.